Good afternoon. Um, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me for this um, presentation. I'm going to share our experiences of hyperglycemia. Uh, we all know that it is a problem in uh, people with diabetes. Many times people present with diabetes people with diabetes present with hyperglycemia to hospital emergencies. Uh, but I'm going to focus on hyperglycemia occurring while the patients are admitted for whatever reason. Lots of time, uh, at least in UK, the data suggests that 25% of bad occupancy is by people with diabetes. Although diabetes may not be the reason that got them to the hospital. When hypoglycemia occurs, it has consequences in terms of clinically, it has social consequences and we'll touch bases on that later on. And the financial impacts are huge. The cost of treating one hypoglycemia in a &E is about 1000 British pound. Whereas when the patients are admitted and they are in hospital, the cost of one hypoglycemic episode that includes the cost of the length of stay and the complication that occurs as a result of increased length of stay could amount to in excess of 2,000 pound. Um, that is a lot of money, so it's an important aspect of diabetes care. The risk of hypoglycemia is increased when patients are admitted and this increase is multifactorial. The patients are in and they are sick, they the feeding pattern may be changed, their calorie intake may be reduced because of hyperglycemia and uh, because of dietetic changes, their food tray may be given, they have been uh, given treatment and the food tray comes late. So there is a delay in eating although they have already been given treatment. Sometimes the patients are kept fasting for procedures or they are waiting for investigations. Um, the medications are given and they are still fasting. Um, sometimes when the patients are sick, it could have an effect on appetite. It could have an effect on their autonomy. So a normally a fit and healthy person who would realize that he's not eaten enough and will reduce the dose of the insulin is not able to do that. And that time, as a result of that, they're given their usual glucose lowering medication, although their food intake has not been as much, as it is, or they have not been able to finish their whole tray that, they, that was given to them. So a lot of reasons for these people to get hypoglycemia while they are an inpatient. Sometimes the medic because they are having high blood sugar because of increased insulin resistance due to illness, for example, a person develops an infection, get admitted, they're in but they become insulin resistant, their insulin doses gets increased to keep blood sugar down to reduce mortality because we all know that hyperglycemia in acute hospital admission increases mortality. When their infection gets treated, the insulin resistance decreases, but the insulin dose doesn't. And before we know, they are having a hyperglycemia. As a result, it has the consequences in terms of increased risk. Uh, they stay in hospital longer, so they, can, they are more likely to contract hospital-associated infection like C. diff or MRSA. They can contract uh, different other uh, hospital-associated uh, illnesses. They are at risk of fall because they are in different surroundings and that adds up to their length of stay as well as illness and comorbidities. And a court told us that it is associated with increased risk of death, which is totally uh, maybe independent. In addition, each hypoglycemic episode takes away uh, physiological changes and increases the risk of subsequent hypoglycemia. So it does create a vicious cycle when these people um, are admitted with hyperglycemia. The social costs are direct and indirect. Uh, hyperglycemia will take away their um, um, awareness and symptoms with recurrent hypoglycemia, which will and could result in them, these people losing their driving license, which will have an effect on their earning potential. The indirect cost will come, just an example is that DVLA, they may hit or they may have an accident and they could compromise their safety as well as the safety of other people which indirectly affects the well-being of the nation. Uh, we touched briefly on financial cost as important. So it is important that when people with diabetes are admitted and if they have a hypoglycemia, that diabetes specialist team are involved early enough 
and the local protocols are followed to achieve euglycemia in this group of people who are occupying 25% of beds. The National Service Framework for Diabetes in the United Kingdom was launched in 2001 with a strategy to implement in 2003. This was the problem with diabetic emergencies as well as inpatient management of hypertension, uh, hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia was identified and recognized as such. The National Service Framework Standard 7 focuses on the management of diabetes emergencies and Standard 8 specifically looks at people who are admitted with diabetes related problem and the aim is to provide an excellent diabetes care to people with diabetes when they are in, in, uh, in hospital. So we looked at um, our data and we conducted a retrospective study with a view to look at the prevalence of hypoglycemia in people admitted with diabetes in our center. We looked at whether this hypoglycemia was treated appropriately, i.e. whether we followed the national and locally agreed guidelines. We checked whether following the hypoglycemic episodes the treatment modification occurred correctly, i.e. whether the dose of insulin or glucose lowering medications were reduced and what was the impact of hypoglycemia on length of stay. It is important to, that um, these episodes are conveyed and treatment modifications are passed on to the team that looked after. So it is important that these episodes are notified in the clinical notes as well as to the general practitioners in the community to avoid and prevent recurrent hypoglycemia in hospital and avoid subsequent hypoglycemia happening in the community. With that, we looked at two weeks consecutive data and we looked at the all the blood glucose uh, monitoring which was taken from the point of care testing within a two weeks pre-specified pre uh, period for all inpatient. We identified people with blood glucose levels of less than 4 i.e. anyone whose blood sugars were less than uh, were 3.9 or less were included in this um, trial. And then we looked at various parameters including length of stay. Uh, over a two weeks period, uh, 1,458 patients had their blood glucose levels checked and hypoglycemic episodes were 148 um, um, in that period. 4.7 percent people had type 1 diabetes that experienced hypoglycemia and about 80 percent people had type 2. Some of them allow around 11 percent people had secondary diabetes. The mean age of our population was 69 years, which is consistent with the no normal population of people uh, that comes to the hospital. When we looked at the location of hypoglycemia, majority of these episodes happen in medical wards, although some did occur in surgical or joint wards that provided joint care. About 50% of hypoglycemia were nocturnal, which means that uh, blood sugars were checked for one reason or other. Um, the mean blood glucose levels was 3.38 millimoles per liter. Following an episode of hypoglycemia, we looked at the treatment of the hypoglycemic episode and we recognized that the, national, the guidelines that are that you treat the hypoglycemia, check the blood sugars in 15 minutes and if they remain hypoglycemic, then we treat it twice and follow the cycle and if they remain hypoglycemic after three such cycles then the doctor help should be called or the specialist team should be contacted to provide an intervention. Um, the mean duration of hypoglycemia per episode was about 84 minutes. That's a long time to spend being hypoglycemic that could fry your brain and reduce the recognition and cognitive effect. 87% of these people were on insulin or insulin myometic, so there was an opportunity that should have been used, could have been used to reduce these uh, recurrent episodes. Looking at the management of hyperglycemia, um, the time to call the doctor to help uh, in the management of this hyperglycemic episode was about 80 minutes. When we go back to the previous slide, uh, the duration of hyperglycemia was 84, and now if we see that after 80 minutes, the mean time to call the doctor, which means that doctor's presence or specialist input did help in getting these people out of hypoglycemia. So it is important that hypoglycemic treatment is not just left um, and is required, um, and specialist input is given, or at least a doctor sees the patient. 
The treatment modification immediately following hypoglycemia did not occur, explaining the recurrent hypoglycemic episodes. If it occurred, it was quite late uh, and usually waited 24 hours to get the specialist team to see this patient unless it was a weekend. In that case, it was even longer, more than 48 hours. So to summarize, the in a treatment for hypoglycemia was inadequate in about 60% of cases. Protocols was breached, i.e. local guidelines were not followed. Uh, the treatment of hypoglycemia episode as such was insufficient and the treatment varied from um, glucogel or the fast acting carbohydrate 15 grams which is appropriate and recommended to just coffees and biscuits and then the patients were left on their own to have another episode. Looking at the treatment changes, 13.4% um, of patients experienced treatment changes after the doctors or specialist team were called in. 60% of these time, these changes were not communicated to the general practitioner, thus increasing the risk of hyperglycemia in the community. When we looked at the length of stay, the mean duration of uh, these people staying in hospital was 10 days as opposed uh, which was three days more than expected with diabetic people who did not have hypoglycemia. So these people stayed in hospital to get them out of hypoglycemia and were at risk of getting um, hospital associated problems. <coughs> Documentation is an important part and that was the most important aspect of care which was missing. 90% of hyperglycemia was documented only on the nursing side of the notes or and not in the main hospital sets of the patient's notes, which means the team, the base team that were looking after these patients were not aware of hypoglycemic episodes until it was brought to their attention or someone actually looked at the blood glucose parameters. Um, the symptoms. When the hypoglycemia happened, the symptoms were not checked, awareness was not recorded, um, and these things happen only in 5 and 16 percent respectively, which is clearly uh, needs improvement. As said earlier, the communication or at the time of discharge, communication to the GP occurred only in 33 percent, so a large number of patients uh, were at risk of having hypoglycemia post-discharge. Following the hypoglycemic episodes, the driving was not discussed. So these people did not know that the, they need to check their blood sugar. The, within UK, United Kingdom, the driving is usually um, managed by the DVLA, and I can never remember the full form of this, uh, but they are the one who issues driving licenses. In UK, uh, if people have diabetes, then they need to have a doctor's um, signature to say that they are fit to drive, i.e. they do not have hypoglycemia or they do not have loss of awareness of hypoglycemic symptoms and other bits about retinopathy, foot neuropathy, etc. Um, if somebody has a hypoglycemic episode while on the wheel um, and they have an accident, it is a criminal offense and people have gone to prison. So it is extremely important, not only for the person, it is important for the other people that are on the road and it is statutory obligatory for us clinicians to discuss this uh, with uh, patients because the patient can come back to us saying we did not inform them. So it is important and that important consideration did not happen in a large group of people. So to summarize, inpatient hypoglycemic episodes are common. Uh, these are not managed any adequately when the hypoglycemia happen as an inpatient. Local protocols were not followed and hypoglycemic patient uh, episodes were not treated appropriately. Patient with hypoglycemia had a longer length of stay, increasing the risk of underlying comorbid conditions. Their documentation in the notes were inadequate. Hypoglycemic episodes were recurrent as a result of lack of treatment modification. The discharge letters to GPs did not carry all the information that was required. So we recommend that locally agreed protocol should be developed and implemented rigorously to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia in hospital. All patients experiencing hypoglycemic episodes should be seen by a specialist team and the treatment reviewed to reduce this risk further and the documentation should be better with specific focus on driving and information to the GP. Thank you.
So thank you very much for the uh, very interesting report and uh, also a very depressing report in, the, in a way. So uh, what's, what's going on? Why, why the situation is so, so poor? I think majority is because two problems. One is the documentation is on two different aspects. One is the patient notes and one is the nursing notes. And people understand, do not, uh, the high blood sugars are bad. Uh, people do not understand or they are not aware of this high poke can kill immediately kind of a situation. Following this, we have introduced a, just a sort of a sticker that if blood sugars are low, just let the doctor know. And that has reduced the high poke frequency in our hospital by about 70%. So we've gone about by 75 days without a hypo in a couple of wards where we've introduced this measure. So um, <clears throat> is anything uh, being done after your uh, evaluation report now? Uh, is somebody taking any action? Yes, that's what we did. Uh, we came up with a pink butterfly project. Uh, so anybody who has a hypo will have a pink uh, dot a spot we actually have pink butterfly sticker by their side so when the clinicians come to the hospital uh, to the ward they know that we have four people who had hypo so the action is taken very immediately so okay. we avoid the delay all right um, any other questions comments thank you I think the advice is very useful in the community when patients are very conscious and active. When they are in hospital, it makes a difference if there is a bit of a proactiveness within the clinicians and nursing team. Uh, and again, the advice would be to be aware that hypo is there. So everybody is involved and engages actively in avoiding this episode. And frequent monitoring helps. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, again, here is... Uh,